Hello, I'm Jashikins, and welcome to the long-delayed Jash Talks episode. With me, as always, is my lovely co-host. Ha! I'm lovely now. She's just kissing ass. I'm amazing. The uh, Baron Punchy. Y your name? B Baron Punchy. I said for it. The Baron Punchy. Said it in a very different accent as well, just to get the point across that I am the Baron. Okay, and today our guest is disconnected <laughs> <laughs> well disconnected how are you today oh okay omar Doing yeah. The usual thing. yeah the link should still be in skype so <laughs> that was oh god he... <laughs> it's fine it's fine he'll join us yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was perfect timing <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, I, I had another... Introducing you, and then it was like... Yeah, I, I DC'd again. Uh, I'm here, though. I'm that long-haired, creepy guy. Can I ask a quite pertinent question? Okay. This is very important, just to oh. life itself. Yeah. Why don't you have long hair? Uh, I like it. <laughs> And is for it, religious reason, for semi-religious reasons. But I can't. Is it? Is it behind? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. I see the long. I have out. it in a ponytail right now. It's easier to keep the headset on when I have it in a ponytail. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it, I it'll see that. Slide. I thought you had short hair. I was like, he's the long-haired creepy guy with short hair now. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. see, it, see. It's his new look. Mm -hmm. I like it. It kind of looks like a no. different summer, I think. It just, uh, if, if the headset will slowly slide back down, either backward <laughs> or forward, if I if I don't have it in a ponytail, I found. So, to keep it stationary, I put, oh, I have it in a ponytail. You know what you should call it? Mm hmm? A dragon's wing. This ponytail is not money enough. You want to say it's a dragon's wing. Like, <laughs> got it in a dragon's wing. <laughs> and pop it, throw it up a few extra chest hairs and just slap a man with your penis. <laughs> okay. Continuing on from that line of thought to a different line of thought, uh, what are your top three horror movies, books, like TV shows, you know, etc.? Mm -hmm. Um... Let's see. I didn't get. I didn't watch a lot of horror growing up. I grew up in a Southern Baptist household, so very conservative. <laughs> but um, let's see. Honestly, as far as horror films go, I am actually one of those people who's very partial to the Scream trilogy. I will admit, you know, that they, you know, the first film is is probably my favorite of the three. It's it's to me, it's the most put together of the three films. The third film is my least favorite. But uh, but I do like uh, but I did like the Scream trilogy. I don't know if that counts as if that's cheating and saying. Yeah, I you know, I would say keeping the whole um, keeping a whole of a series is okay. You just have to like seen or played or read what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I uh, as far as a TV show, um, I did like Freddy's Nightmares. I mean, it's it's. A horribly cheesy and camp and whatnot, and it's it's kind of debatable as to whether or not it's actually like scary. But at the same time, it's still it has that weird kind of exactly. 80s cheese fun. Uh, Freddy's Nightmares was a TV anthology series based off the Nightmare on Elm Street series. It mm -hmm. uh, takes it takes place in uh, the town of Springwood, and uh, it's hosted by Freddy Krueger. And Freddy Krueger is played by um, uh, uh, Robert Englund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I want this inside me. <laughs> <laughs> you want a lot of things we can mention on here inside of you. Well, oh, shit, I got room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. This slight interruption, but I just found this out last night. Like the first Scream movie was based on something that really happened, and of course, yes. that real thing that happened had to have been in my home state, Florida. Yeah. I've heard of I've heard of that. I have heard that uh, the story that you know Scream was inspired by an actual an actual event. Yeah. yeah. I, I, why does it have to always be Florida? Can we get away with one thing? 
sure. I don't know. I would argue that I would argue that Mississippi has weirder and more horror, more terrifying things happen inside of it. But Florida has the better press agents, so yeah. more crap that happens in Florida ends up on CNN and Fox. You know, it's like if CNN and Fox were to turn its gaze toward Mississippi, they would recoil in horror. Oh, okay. Let's stop with the. Florida shit and uh, get on to your uh, last pick. I like the Florida shit. The Florida shit was good. We were making fun of the Floridans. Oh, you, Omar. Yeah, let's see. I, I'm trying to remember when was the last when was the last really scary book I read. That was that's actually the one that I'm kind of drawing a a blank on because I read I've read um I don't know if it really counts as horror. But I have read a uh, – I read a lot of Christopher Pike uh, when I was able to – yeah, I wasn't able to read a lot of his growing up. But when I got older and now I'm collecting – I'm going back and collecting his books. And he wrote a lot of supernatural you know, stories, and some of them had horror elements in them. So if I had to pick a book, I would say anything by Christopher Pike. Yeah. But I don't know if I don't know if uh I don't know if anyone here knows who anyone listening knows who Christopher Pike is. I don't know. He was um uh he was actually a pretty big deal in the late eighties and well really more in the nineties, but in the late eighties and nineties he wrote uh young adult fiction. He was I would argue he was probably one of the big five names in terms of young adult scary stories. You had uh, R.L. Stein, of course, with Fear Street and the Goosebumps series. Of course, R.L. Stein is more known for Goosebumps now than Fear Street. But uh, you had Christopher Pike, Lois Duncan, and the like. And oh, Lois uh, Duncan, I remember her. Yeah, L.J. Smith, I believe. But you had, you know, some names that were kind of synonymous with teen supernatural ho- slash horror fiction, and. Uh, so if you were a bookworm or, you know, at least, you know, a reader, you know, a big reader, whether you were open about that or not, because you had plenty of teenagers who were big readers <laughs> in the 90s, but they kept it quiet because it wasn't cool enough. I but, use uh, it book. It's, I swear, I use, it, I use it to hide my porn. Honestly. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, the uh, if you were if you were growing up in the '90s and you read a lot, chances are you were you you at least were familiar with the name Christopher Pike, even if you didn't read any of his books. I th- I can't remember that name, and I was a huge bookworm. Like I could finish off like a novel or two in a week. <laughs> I finished off a novel or two in a year. Wow, that's a short time for you. Such intellectualism. <laughs> My God, I'm a genius and so smart. <laughs> I don't get to write. I don't get to read as many books because I'm writing more of them now. Oh, cool. Yeah, he does. He's I think had some like ads on the Manic Expression site. Yeah, I like that. I think just in general, I like when people who read books then start making books because then better books come out. Yeah. And then I have a good book to read. Yeah, it's yeah. like if you read. Uh, if you read, you can understand what to do, what not to do, what you like, what you don't like. I and think I think the good part is, is if you read enough, you, you dodge the tropes. You know, <laughs> start to start. Look, ever since I discovered TV tropes and know so much about them, I am now become deathly annoyed of every trope I see. Like I know what you are. You're the damsel in distress. God damn it! You get out of this movie. You are ruining it. And yeah, it gets a bit. What are you get rid of space back? <laughs> Show me space yeah, I, I, I got addicted to TV tropes too. <laughs> I, I, yeah, everyone does my I, that shit sucks your life out you. Yeah, I don't really read TV tropes. You should. I like every see, time. You, you, you do. Start reading after this podcast, and I'll see you next year. Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, Omar, what are your top three horror picks? Okay, movie. Half the world's gonna bitch at me because this is a gay ass choice. The Ring. My fucker, that shit scared the balls out of me. Okay, I was a child watching that movie. I wasn't a child; I was like thirteen or something. I was watching that movie, right? Chilling out, watching like I was scared. You know the bit where they where they show all the kind of fingers getting chopped off and the scary ass shit, the, the actual video. I swear to God, I was like, I could watch this, or I could close my eyes and pray to God I don't get a call in seven weeks. A week. <laughs> so I closed my eyes. After it was all, I was like, okay, that was scary as balls. I'm okay now. I'm okay now. And I had to walk upstairs after that because it was late. I go into my bedroom. And would you believe it? The TV's on and in the white fuzzy state. I just proceeded to lose my bowels all over the floor 
and remove myself from the vicinity. It's like, no, nope, I'm out. Not even in England anymore. I was in France. I decided to move to Turkey. Lived in Turkey for a couple of years. It's horrifying. Oh, yeah, it's... Dublin really is terrifying. I don't know why it is. Um, it's I think it's the fact that here's the thing. When when you when you use a horror movie like this, this is just mounted. When you use a horror movie like say Jason or Freddy Krueger. I think part of the fear is that they're stronger than you, they're bigger than you, they're going to take you down, you know, there's nothing you can do to fight them off. Whereas, uh, whereas with, like, uh, Samara from The Ring, you think you can fight her off. And I think, because of that, when I think of Jason and Freddy, I think, actually, because that's their thing, they're stronger than me, they're bigger than me, I might be able to fight them off. Because that's really all they got. Whereas, when I think of Samara, I think, wait a second, she's not stronger than me, she's still going to kill me. I could fight her all I, all I want, it ain't going to do shit. And that's scary. And also the seven week thing, the whole, you know, don't matter what's going to happen, seven weeks you're going to die. Bitch's going to come out of the trees if she has to. <laughs> like, it's like, hmm, that's terrifying. Uh, and, uh, okay, next is TV show, yeah? Okay. Uh, right, if no one's got any comments about that, thank God. Uh, then uh, Goosebumps. And I realise, once again, this is a populist choice. But look. I you for being popular. Popular, you asshole. <laughs> look, look, I can't help it, okay? Here's the thing. When I watched that show as a kid, once again, it scared the balls out of me, okay? That, I swear to God, I had this thing where if I was going through the TV channels and I heard the Goosebumps theme song, remote down, out the fucking room. Gone, <laughs> okay? If I can still hear it, I am too close to it. Don't even want to change the channel. I don't want, I just think, if I change the channel, it might be pissed off at me. It might anger it. I think the only Goosebumps episode or book that really creeped me out was the one with, what was the name of that fucker, uh, Slappy the Dummy? Like, dummies are just naturally <laughs> fucking creepy, so when you have a creepy one... That movie, yeah. Annabelle, I just watched it. Even though it's not a scary movie if you consider it really in total, just the fucking dummy. That yeah. fucking dummy. Dear God. Look straight out of hell. Like the <laughs> devil's fucking baby doll. Jesus. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's my one goosebumps in general. I mean, there were episodes that just weren't, but I think in general it was pretty scary. I think mainly more than anything, the intro was scary. Yeah. <laughs> I I do have one other thing to add, if I may, regarding TV. This one, this is actually one that scare that I found legitimately scary growing up, and that was the handful of episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark that I saw, which well, I'm a little embarrassed to to it, admit okay. to. There was one episode, the episode where you, where like you. Put this stuff in the eye, in your eyes, and these people like from another dimension, mm -hmm. you know, start to cry. That scared the fuck out of me for like a yeah, few yeah. days afterwards. Yeah. Is that the is that the that, that movie where the guy kind of starts seeing that everyone's a demon or something? Like they got. Hey, you're skull? thinking of They Live. Yeah. And those are. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, I love that movie. That was a good movie. It was terrifying. Yeah. Was, I know it wasn't. It might not be terrifying now, but. Back then, I thought I was scared as balls. I need to uh, watch all of it. I was, It was on TV like a day or two ago, but I was like, should I watch They Live or should I, or should I listen to the commentary for The Cabin in the Woods? I haven't even watched The Cabin in the Woods yet. You need to. I've had lots of people telling me that, but I've been like, I you could watch to. that. Oh, I can watch Dragon Ball Z again. <laughs> Pardon? Okay. I, okay, continue. Oh, okay. Now, book. When I never would you guys hear. Never read a scary book other than Goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> I was. I'm. I'm a kind of guy who likes like his mysteries and stuff. I was like, I'm the I'm like the gay ass Harry Potter Dan Brown type fella. And Lord of the Rings, obviously, Aragons for that. Not really the greatest uh, person for looking into horror movie books. I personally don't know if I'd get scared of a book. I don't. I'm sure it's possible. As much as I used to, yeah, I just didn't, didn't used to think you could enjoy a book yet at all. I don't think I could really get scared of it because I feel like it's very fear is a very much an imagery device. I think um, I need to see it to be scared of it. If I don't see it, it's not as scared. Then again, creepy pasta scared the balls out of me too. <laughs> Can I pick a creepy pasta? I picked that creepy pasta where like the, it's the god experiment and the guy cuts off all his you know like cuts off his nose and his eyes and his ears just so he can't see anything or can't do anything. He's just a brain. Then he sees God. <laughs> Fuck off with your. Teddy bear! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That bear's gone to space. I might as well shove it up your ass and see it go somewhere else really, really dark. Oh! Yeah, oh. there's already a bunch of stuff up there. Oh, no! Oh! Oh! <laughs> uh, don't tell me that! I wow! Will. 
Okay, now for my picks. Yeah, cool. your pick. <laughs> um, there are two movies and one book. The first movie is Stop Bitching. Um, <laughs> I've never heard of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, the my favorite movie of all time, even though I've missed out on like the first five or ten minutes and I really need to go back to see those, is Psycho. I was uh, like, doing my... Here's the story how I first watched it and the only time I've watched the original version, which I need to correct, you know, in the future. I was doing my homework and like I, I have finished and I was... And mom and my then stepdad are like, hey, we're watching like Psycho, do you want to sit down? And I'm just thinking, I don't want to take a shower, I hate taking showers. So I was like, okay, I'll just watch this and then afterwards take a shower. Dumbest decision of my life. <laughs> Scariest <laughs> fucking shower ever. <laughs> I just realized, because it's everything, oh god. That was a poor decision. Yeah. I I Here's your poor decision. <laughs> hey! Yeah. yeah. And your favorite, let's see, your favorite horror TV show and your favorite... I, I didn't list, I didn't say we had to do TV shows. You guys just decided to do TV shows. Well, since like we decided... Show, you you it. <laughs> okay, I'll extend my list to four cents. You know, I need to get the TV show in. Okay, yeah. fuck. Um... I'm sort of debating between two, one being the new FX series that recently ended its first season, The Strain, mm -hmm. just because of what it does with vampires. It's based on a book series that Guillermo del Toro and another guy did, and Guillermo del Toro heads the show, which is what originally drew my interest. And so Ooh. these vampires don't give... Uh, shit about romance or anything. They're just, you know, blood suckers. No real humanity left in them. And then there's also a combination between... There's also more of a focus on the vampires being more scientific. You know, yeah. there's actually science facts, how things work. Can I, can I just ask a question about vampires? We don't have to answer it now, but I just want to quickly answer it. Why is it that no one just decides to just out and out make a Dracula? Just have a Dracula back again. Just how, how he is, you know, the slightly suave, slightly psychopathic Dracula in a suit and a cape. I'm just saying, if he could transform into, like, the dark and turn into wet bats and shit, if he did it right, that could be terrifying on his own. Dracula is kind of scary, yeah. actually, if you think about the it. The master in the strain looks like, sort of like, Nos N Nosferatu. Sort of has that same sort of appearance. Mm -hmm. I like Nosferatu. Nosferatu never seems scary to me. He looked kind of cute. Yeah, he looks like a bunch of people were commenting like, oh, that seems so funny. He's, his costume seems so funny. It's like, ah. It, it is adorable. You would keep him as a pet, wouldn't you? Yeah. I keep just... many things as pets. <laughs> uh, did you know that? Your favorite what? book, then. Okay, um... Also, for a horror TV show, I'll just say The Walking Dead, and we can do, like, an entire episode on that one day. Surely that doesn't count. That's not horror, is it? Is yeah, it? it is. It's zombies. It yeah. I would argue it's zombies is its own definition now. Walkers. Okay, favorite book. Okay, here's another sort of... It's funny how many of these will probably end up with stupid decisions. <laughs> but anyways, I am a big Stephen King fan. Like, I can read the majority of his books like right before bed, fall asleep nicely. Like, I can be fine. And so, um, I'm reading the last 50 pages of Kuja before bed because then it's like, you can't put that bitch down. It's like, I, I can't die before I finish this book. I need to finish it now. And the thing is, I, I won't spoil the ending for those of you who haven't read the book, and the ending of the book is different than the movie, and I hate the movie's ending because of the change. And so I finished reading Cujo, and for like 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just in bed going, why? I, I know how much pain you can deal out, Mr. King, but why? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why do I like this? Joshy. Jashi, listen. Oh my god, I can't. 
Have you guys read the ending to the book of it? Of I haven't read it yet. It's on my long to okay. read list. Okay, guys, because... guys, the ending to it is different to the movie, and it is creepy as fuck. I don't mean scary. I mean Stephen King may or may not be worthy of a jail place. I'm just saying. I'm just. Of, it's scary. of what? It's in a whole different way. I don't know if I know that because you guys don't know about it. I don't know if I should tell you. But if at any point you want to know, I'd Google it and be recoiled in horror. God, I, like a penny wise from it does reappear in the final book in the Dark Tower tri- Dark Tower series. Series. Yeah, there's seven books. Oh, fuck. Not a... oh wait, Pennywise is a clown, yes. Uh, when Jonathan returns, um, but basically, yeah. A Pennywise is not real. He's like this demon or something. He's not a. He just took on the form of a clown. Oh. Yeah. So there's no clown in the final wait, book. No, wait. I've got it. Listen. Close your ears. I'm going to say to the viewers what happened at the end of it. They need to know. They need to know. I need to tell someone. Okay. Jonathan, Luke, it's joined this video. Okay. Hey, close your ears. Close your ears. Somebody say yeah. Close your yeah. ears. Why does he keep leaving? What's wrong with us? Continue. All right, here's what happened, yeah? At the end of it in the book. At the end of the movie, you know, they're in this, the sort of shit out, it's all fine. At the end of the book, after they t- defeat the monster and stuff, they're all together, they're all lost in the sewers or something, right? And they find a way out, and they're all freaked out. And you know the girl? She figures out how to get them all to calm down, to get them out. You know what she does? Fox. She fucks every one of them. <laughs> that does. Why does that? One by one, in front of each other, with the one she likes left last. And they're like twelve or something. <laughs> what? What? That wasn't the ending, was it? I'm pretty sure that was. No, it wasn't, because they're older at the end of the book. Remember, they defeat no, the. No, this is after they defeat the. And then years later, they basically all get back to the town and fight. No, the... no, this is this is this is the first one with the kids. It is a gigantic book. Mm-hmm. Sorry, well, I, this is when that happens. I I kept getting a server error message. I had to log back in. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, you missed out on spoilers. That yeah, you would have watched close your ears anyway. Oh, okay. Ears. Thank you. <laughs> good timing. Good timing. Your internet saved you. You should thank it. <laughs> Bye, okay. Thank you, <laughs> okay, and um, for another favorite movie that was recently released that th- surprisingly does not have a bad decision moment <laughs> was uh, Oculus with a uh, Karen Gillian because the whole movie is a giant mindfuck. Once you get into the house, you don't know what's real, what's not. That's awesome. Isn't it Karen Gillan? Karen Gillan, whatever. She's awesome. Well, yeah, let's get her name right. Damn. Gillen. Damn, she's a Doctor Who companion. She deserves some respect. Amy. She's also a, a villain in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Very good in that. Very good in that she did. Yeah, she did. I hope to see more of her. And more of Space Morale in the sequel. Yeah. Michael Rooker, who was on The Walking Dead as Merle, is in... Guardians of the Galaxy for uh, Space the... Merle. Space Merle. He's the exact same character, but in space. <laughs> Merle in space. Put that in mind. It's kind of cool. Okay. Next, um, next up is least favorite horror cliche, and to both of you who seem to do... Oh, God. Can I go first? Please, God, can I go first? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, one word. This covers a whole lot of things, okay? Me and my girlfriend, we've come up with a name for this. It's probably one the world uses and all, okay? Stupid fucking white girl decision. <laughs> okay? okay? It's, when, it's when they do the stupid, stupid thing that you know you shouldn't do if you live in the real world. Oh, there's a noise outside. I better go outside in my panties and find out what it is so it can kill me. And oh, a flashlight. Don't forget the flashlight. 
Oh, with a flashlight, yeah, that'll save my ass. With a flashlight, that's batteries about to die as well. Don't forget that little bit, right? And obviously, the oh, there's a monster there. I'm gonna leave my gun, and I'm just gonna walk out there, and I'm gonna say hello to it. Oh, my dog's barking outside. I'm just gonna tell him to shut up. Oh, guess what? My wife is calling me constantly for the last couple of hours. I should ignore that call and go back to the house when she's being killed. That's the thing I should do. And also, never calling the police. Never just running the fuck away. Always running away just in a straight direction. No, no zigzagging, no hiding. What, the motherfucker's gonna see you hiding in a cupboard or like jump into the fucking forest? You know, come on, be smart! You know, this, I don't know, there's a monster coming. Oh, guess what? Can you climb a tree? Probably not. Climb a fucking tree, you're good. I no! Climb a tree. Never, they never do it. Never do it. And always they go back for someone. And also, listen, if you're in a horror movie environment, do not have sex. Don't do it. You will be bombed by a monster. You are long dead. If you're, especially if you're the first one, if you bang someone straight away, you're dead. You, I'm calling it quits for you. If I see, if I, if I'm watching a horror movie and I'm seeing someone shagged, I'm like, well, clap, clap, good job, you're having the sex. But guess what? It's the last sex of your life because you're going die. Nah. <laughs> oh god. There we go. Going all out the way. So many, so many fucking horror tropes. Okay. You may, you may, you may, you may go. Okay, creepy. Mm. I'd say I'd say actually that's like one of my biggest pet peeves with uh, horror films, and well, it's it's a toss up between that you know when not e- it seems to befall a lot of female characters more than males, but re- really when you think about it, it's it's really just horror characters in general. But along with that, I will say the damsel in distress trope. You know the you know the the girl who decides, you know, like the the blonde girl who goes down the alley at night alone, you know, is like, la la la, la 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 la, stab, stab, stab. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that made me love Buffy the Vampire Slayer so much, the TV series, yeah. is because Buffy in so many ways was the the Daphne archetype, you know, the blonde girl who, you know, who arguably would have done something like that, and yet she's also the heroine with the superpowers and the magic kung fu abilities that gives, you know, and so she just turns around and beats the ever-loving shit. Uh, that's re- that's the reason I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer is that she's allowed to be, you know, a girl. She's allowed to, like, makeup and boys and clothing, but that doesn't deter her from, like, kicking major fucking I like that. Ass. I complained about that in a few episodes, episodes before, that every tough girl has to be essentially a man who bangs everyone. It's like, mm-hmm. that doesn't make you tough. Oh. Buffy's tough, because she kicks ass and is still a person. Not, mm-hmm. you're, not, you're not a tough woman if you, like, walk around with a cigar and, like, you know, hump people all the time. Like, hey, man, <laughs> you've got a nice ass, I'm going to bang you. Just look, you've, just, you've just made a man into a woman is all you've done now. It's mm-hmm. just the point of that. It's just weird. Although Cara Trace was pretty cool anyway. Okay, um. I hate tropes. I've gone. I've seen so many of them because I hate them. I hate them so much. I think that's the reason why so many people have lo- so little respect for the horror genre is because the horror genre has. It feels like the horror genre has been eaten alive by tropes and cliche. You know, by tropes, and they have thus become yeah, cliches. Okay, you can, you can, um, you can pick out about what's about to happen. Of the if you can figure out tropes, you can pick out anything. You can figure it all out. You know your tropes. You will know what's going to happen in every horror movie. You will see it coming from a mile away. Oh my! Easy to figure it out. Oh, we're, we're going to be talking about the how the horror genre has evolved in a second, okay? So I want you to save all those, like, excellent comments. Fine, <laughs> I will keep my genius inside. Damn. You don't have a genius. But anyways, the horror uh, cliche that I'll pick, I, I love B-horror movies. Like, I have a huge collection of that. <laughs> but, so, but the horror cliche, I'd have to say, is... There's a haunted house. Bad shit happens. What do they do? We're going to stay in here. Nothing's really wrong. <laughs> and so I actually love when some of the recent movies have turned that on their head. Like a Insidious, it turns out that evil being is connected to kids, so they can't move. And for the ending of Sinister's spoiler alert... Moving to like a different house actually makes you die quicker. 
a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah, the cliche where the nice, wholesome suburban family, you know, like either wins a contest or the one of the fa- usually the father, but a parent gets a gets a new job offer that requires them to move. So they, you know, they like we're going to be living in a really new place, good kids. Isn't that isn't that exciting? And then they get to the new place, and it's the Lovecraft. It's the little house that Lovecraft builds. You know, <laughs> it's like two stories, broken windows. You know, and for whatever reason, there are clouds that shoot lightning down, hanging over this one place. You know, and it's like. I- and nobody, and like the only people who stop to think that maybe this was a poor choice are the kids. Think about that for just a second. The only ones who notice this are the kids. Except for the youngest one who is already friends with the ghost for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, there's that too. Casper the killer ghost it makes a great um, friend for kids, really young kids. Yeah. But no, yes, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, none of the parents, none of the adults who are supposed to be in charge of their children's lives and, t- and taking care of them look at this and think for a second, yeah, this might have been a poor choice. Let's go back into our other place. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move in. <laughs> yeah, let's move in. The serial killer is waiting for us. <laughs> Can't keep it waiting, children. <laughs> yeah, but also, like, an added, like, onto the cliche, I'll take the original Amityville horror. They're like yeah. all escaped, and you know, that's the point when you're in a horror movie, you just fucking keep going. But yeah. no, they're like, oh, the family dog's still in there, and the dad's like, better go in and get that. Yeah. Okay, okay, look, that makes sense. You don't leave a dog behind. No, don't leave but, a dog but behind. you might die. You have got to... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. A dog is better than a human being. We all know that. You yeah, save but them. sometimes, do- sometimes we have to sacrifice the ones we love. Because we don't want our asses my, killed. I'll sacrifice my own ass before I sacrifice my dog. I will save Bessie before... before. No, I, the ghost can get me. The ghost can drag me to hell as long as Bessie gets out fine. Ain't nobody touch my Bessie. That sounds wrong. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get on to the how the horror genre has... Uh, evolved, and it seems that you and Creepy have already started to, you know, talk about that. So continue. I actually, I actually do the thing. I think it's evolved almost predictably in some ways. In that it's become deliberately subversive. Like they it knows these all tropes now, so it's deliberately being being like, oh, you think this is gonna happen? Nope, it isn't. And it's like, I get it. You're trying to change it, but I kind of. I figured that out now already as well. It's like, you know, they're not going to stay in the house anymore. They're going to move just before, but it's still going to go wrong. And like, uh, I think the best example I can give, just this one very obvious example. At the end of um, a certain movie I watched, I'm not going to say it just in case you guys haven't seen it. Uh, there's a moment where kind of the camera zooms in on something that you swear to God is going to blink and stare back at you or something. You know what I mean? You swear it's going to happen. And it kind of zooms in, zooms in, and you're like, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Zooms all the way in, and then it just kind of Goes to credits. And they're like, huh? Okay. And that's this subverting the stereotype. Obviously, your stereotype would say that it would blink. But because it's such an obvious subversion, they're deliberately doing it. And, like, it's kind of, they're just doing the opposite of what they usually do. It's also a stereotype. And it's just like, eh. And also, it's unsatisfying. Because in some ways, those tropes work. You just need to, you just need to revitalize them, I think. But I think, although, although they are trying, they are trying, I'll give you that. They're not doing it quite right. I tell you what, I think Paranormal Activity is actually, I mean, not the many, 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 many sequels. Paranormal Activity was a pretty good uh, revitalization. That wasn't uh, very much, uh, that wasn't very obvious, was it? I don't, I don't, think, I don't, think, I don't think I realized anything that was happening until, like, hmm. the second movie. I don't know. I don't really movie, like found but... footage movies just because they tend to go slow, and it's, why the fuck is this camera on? Why do you really, why would a normal person? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, I think found footage movies were like a – like they, they started off a niche market and then I, I want to say it was – I want to say it was the Blair Witch Project that, you know, brought them more into the mainstream. But the once – Blair Witch Project sucked. Yeah, right, but the, uh, <laughs> the problem with found footage is that once the novelty is worn off of, oh, mm-hmm. it's a found footage film – there's nothing there. The reason the reason the fan footage worked is because I'm not sure about you guys, but when I watched the Blair Witch Project, it scared the fucking titties out of me. 
<laughs> it wasn't because it was massively scary. It was because my cousin had convinced me it was real. Mm-hmm. And I, I believed it because, I mean, I hadn't seen it before. And once now that there's enough far footage for me, it's like, I know they're not real now. I'm pretty yeah, sure most people know they're not real. So that one thing that they had is gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now it's kind of just... Eh. Yeah, that was... The Blair Witch Project, the problem with that I have, it was so slow, and even though I love to drop the F-bomb, that's like... That composed probably over 90% of the dialogue of the film. I heard... I've read and that then I was the just that hoping, was the case. I was the just hoping for them to die. That's how much it was going so slow that nothing was happening. I'm like, just die so this can end. Yeah. No, I read somewhere that the reason that uh, the word fuck was used so often, so many times, was due to the fact that a lot, the script was, major, the majority of the script was ad-libbed. They were basically, they were given an outline of what to do and the kind of things yeah, to say. The guy who like directed them was fucking asshole. Hey, just go to this location, and shit will happen. <laughs> That's basically it. I thought you guys were gonna say he was British, so he had a point about. <laughs> yeah, it was British. <laughs> you wouldn't be wrong. You wouldn't be wrong. We like the yeah. swears. We do. But uh, I ended up. But no. Um. Well, you know, I said that Scream was, you know, one of my favorite movies, and I, I would, you know, one one reason I argue that is because it did try and take the horror cliche and turn it on its end, turn it on its end with the concept that horror movie victims are aware of horror movies and have watched so many of them that they are familiar with the tropes. So when things like this, you know, when the ghost face killings start happening, they try to associate what is happening in their lives, what is, for them, their real lives, with what they've seen in movies, and they draw parallels between the two. You have the shadowy figure stalking this female heroine. You have the seemingly random killing of the school principal that actually ties into the plot later. You have the... You have that one guy who works at a video store and basically outlines the main three, you know, the three definitive "don't do this" rules in in, <laughs> in flasher horror films. You know, you know, don't have sex, don't get drunk or do drugs, and don't ever say "I'll be right back" because you won't be right back. <laughs> you know, oh. and I, and that was what drew me into it was because I could see these tropes, and I would actually do this kind of thing. Growing up, like if I, I would say if this was a TV show, insert this would be happening right now or something like that. And uh, so when I saw a movie where people, where the characters were doing this as well, it just I, I just you know sort of zoo, zeroed in on it was like yes, <laughs> but uh, you know and and we've uh, you've talked about. Uh, Otto, you've talked about how it uh, horror evolved in a predictable fashion. You know, it's it became such a cliche that the reaction to that was to do the opposite of whatever it would have normally happened. Um, yeah. And uh, that's I think that's what we're seeing now. And you know, it's question you have the argument of whether or not that's really working or whether it's the opposite effect is being done well. But it is, you know, it is changing at least a little bit, but... Um, but not... Hmm, you, you, have a, you make a fair point there. But uh, I, don't, I don't know that found footage films are really... <laughs> are, were really the way to go. <laughs> no, no, I, I well, when I said paranormal activity was a thing, I didn't actually mean the found footage. I thought that was actually the worst part. What I meant was, I didn't feel like any of the actual ghost actions and stuff like that, I felt like that wasn't very predictable. I felt like I, I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know whether they were going to win in the end. I didn't know uh, whether they were going to find out. There was no, like, um, a seance where the ghost talks to them and says, I want to kill you all. It just kind of happened. And I liked that. It kind of felt like, it kind of felt like what I imagine people who actually see ghosts, like, feel like. Like, the people who call ghosts and such. I feel like that's probably what they felt like. And that kind of got me into it more. I kind of saw. I felt more. It felt. All, I can't. It is a total terrible word to use. It felt more realistic up until the part where shit went down. I should point out. But uh, it felt more like that. And when when that happened, it kind of made me creepy. Get a little bit more creepy because like 
There's the small stuff like the door slightly moves and shit like that. I kept thinking after I watched that movie, every time the door slightly moved, I got a little bit of a pang. <laughs> Is that? Should I be worried about that right now? And like to this day, <laughs> if I hear noises in the background, I'm like, I should probably open the window. Well, now the noises window. in the background. I'm glad you figured out the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a great annoyance. Oh man. Yeah, you, you probably don't know this, but uh, uh, most of the podcasts I had a, a fire alarm going off in the background, like a beep. But the thing is, the only there people who could no hear it was uh, was me and whoever was on the podcast. No one who came over could fucking hear it. But I was convinced it was in my head. <laughs> I convinced myself that the beep was in my own head. <laughs> oh, so psycho! I hear I hear noises, and they are beeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But... Hal 1000's ancestor, Hal 1. Yeah, Ty, sort of branching off from the screen movies about how movies that are self-aware, mm -hmm. like uh, The Cabin in the Woods is... I, there's so much you could delve into it. Like, we could do a couple podcast episodes about it. Like, on one hand, it's, you know, a horror movie with, um, with these... With you know a group of teenagers going to a cabin in the woods, and then there are these people below ground that are controlling their actions to serve a god, mm -hmm. and it's also a look at the horror cliches and tropes and sort of so, like saying that's sort of stupid. Like at one point, Chris Hemsworth character says, you know, we should you know all split up and the. Weed guy goes, that sounds dumb. <laughs> it's, it's true. I don't know. Whoever, whoever came up with the let's split up idea should be hung, drawn, and quartered. He has killed more people than the inventor of the gun. Honest to God. <laughs> let's, let's split up because fuck it. Yeah, let's that's true. Because we're because all together, we're going to die, so why don't we do it separately? going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, can, we, can we find something? Can we, I'm not sure if there's a thing. Can we like figure out if there's one movie in existence that has a truly non-stereotypical plot in, horror, in terms of horror movies, and it's good? We need to like, I'll get a team of my best uh, scientists on that right away, and we'll come back in a few weeks. So Barrington. <laughs> no, it's Darth. He's usually wearing a Darth Vader outfit, but he's been in a spacesuit for a little while now. Darth Barrington? Darth. Just Darth. Like Madonna. Oh. Yeah. Gay. <laughs> what are you should talk She's calling Grizzly McGraw. That doesn't sound gay at all. <laughs> okay, Sounds final cool gay. point. What horror universe would you want to be stuck in? Any horror universe, <laughs> any TV show, any game, any movie. I'm gonna let you guys go first. I need some thinking. No, you're you're going second. Then I go last. God. I guess it's Jonathan who may or may not have disconnected. Creepy. No, I'm still here. Oh, good. What? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, I'm. Uh, I don't know. Uh, actually, I wouldn't mind being the host of Night Gallery. <laughs> What's Night Gallery? Night Gallery was a uh, horror anthology series from the 70s. It was hosted by Ron Sterling, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can already hear the outcries of you can never replace Ron Sterling creepy, I know. But uh, <laughs> basically, the each episode, uh, he would introduce a painting and explain that there was a story behind it. And it would typically be a, you know, horror or supernatural oriented, you know, story of some kind. Okay, Omar? Oh, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking deeply about this. I was kind of, what do I think? The obvious choices are like the, the, like the, the kind of the zombie ones, but you know what? I'm going to change it up. I'm going to be smart about this. I would like to pick Twilight. The land of the least terrifying monsters in the world. No, that's not horror. That's that technically counts. It counts. It technically counts. They're it's monsters. It's horrible, but there's a difference. Yeah. Right. Okay, it's uh, science fiction. Let me think. It's uh, science crap. It, it, uh, okay, probably I pick uh, the world of Insidious because uh, 
because then the motherfuckers are the ter- ghosts are terrifying, but you could survive, you could live a normal life, and also as long as you find that chick who deals with the ghosts and essentially seduce her and make her your woman, she can protect you for the rest of your life, and you you can just as long as you just keep her happy, you'll be okay. You won't die. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. In any universe I go to, I'm done. If I go to if I go to the Walking Dead universe, I'm I'm zombie food in a minute. <laughs> I'm the best meat they ever had. I'm like like filet mignon at that point. You know what I mean? They they're gonna they're gonna lose their mind. They're gonna put sauces on me, bit of pepper, bit of salt. Sit there as they nibble on me and save me for later. Okay, oh. that's how bad it's gonna go for me. Well, cannibalism has been introduced in the Walking Dead TV series. That's true. Yeah. Which was oddly tasty looking. Well. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If she went down. I'd eat her leg. Yeah, a bob b- barbecue. Mm. Like Chris, Chris oh, made that no. show on the Talking Dead two weeks in a row. Josh, Anyone not who has joke. not watched uh, the latest episodes of The Walking Dead, get you know what, get caught up, and then just send like hate mail going that was a fucking awful joke, and then I'll say to send your complaints to Chris Hardwick because he made that joke, <laughs> and I was just. Carrying on. <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> okay, um. I was thinking about. There we go. No, I changed my mind. Supernatural World. There we go. Picked it. Back okay. Because everything. Supernatural. Fucking awesome. And also, I can meet Castiel. You can fuck Castiel. What? Look, look, yeah, look, look I, if I, no, no, no shame. You know have you one angel blade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can continue, Omar. Yeah, I picked the supernatural world, honestly. Um, there are uh, there are a lot of cool monsters there. I think if I survive, it would be a good world to live in. And also, just because I get to meet loads of cool people. Hopefully not the devil. Oh, Lucifer was him. awesome on the show. <laughs> yeah, not to people. He's like the that's like the only work of fiction where you can seriously say he wasn't that he was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think here's the thing. I'm the kind of guy who comes quite casual to people. I get the feeling that if I walked up to Lucifer himself and said, "Yo, Lucy, what going on?" I'd probably be you know dead. Hopefully, hopefully I'm only dead. Good. More than likely, I get turned into like like a like a soul handcuff or something like. <laughs> when he, like, he has kinky sex, he just he turns me into like a handcuff. I have to be the handcuff. I have to watch as some dirty shit goes down. <laughs> okay, involving me. But anyways, for my pick. You literally want to bang the devil. Good God, woman. Uh, there is no God involved. You read. You've enabled me. You've titled shit. You know there is no God. What have I done? And then Trey also enables me, and hopefully she'll get a microphone, and then you, me, and possibly Creepy and her can all do a smutcast. Yeah, a smutcast. That's the working title. It will be changed upon the release. But I don't know. I like the title, Smutcast. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'll probably just be focusing on my little fix where we can dissect about how much I need therapy. <laughs> and I can blame the two other fuckers. But anyways, the horror universe I like to get stuck in. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, when I chose this, I didn't choose based on how likely I am to survive. I said, what would be the coolest you know, way to die? Because you know, I'm going to be in a horror universe. I'm like dead already. <laughs> the Alien franchise, just because the Xenomorphs are one of those characters that I would like to die by. It's like, I would die, but it'd be so fucking cool. <laughs> I just said, I just got an image of you be like, oh my god, look at it, it's tearing out my stomach. Oh god, look at it, so cool. Look at it, I want to pay it as it eats my innards like a bitch. <laughs> good. Yeah, plus, okay. you know, I could, like, get off, like, a few seconds before it killed me. Mm-hmm. I, I like for you to turn into one of those mutant hybrid xenomorphs where instead of just, you know, 
a xenomorph popping out, it somehow fuses with its host, and the you know there's like a half Jashikins, half xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> creature running around like the Predalien, only this one has an incredibly warped sense of humor. <laughs> I already have a warped sense of humor. This would work. That would be fun. Anyone who's watching that this and can draw, for the love of all things, draw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got, like, my Tumblr is jashikins.tumblr.com. Just go and submit the drawings there. <laughs> I will post them all, like, all or the best of, depending how much I get, to my main blog. <laughs> Do this. Yes. I know whoever does this that you're bringing into life the most horrifying image the world has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I make peace with your god after you do it. <laughs> I have no god. I am my god. Okay. But I, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went to some strange places today, didn't oh, we? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> strange is normal. Have you... Yeah, no, today we didn't even go that far. Today? Shit gets weird in this. Yeah, is it like... Have you listened to the past episodes? Like, I... Um, say, hey, can if he you did, he'd be, he get, be like, right guess now. in this? I should also more clearly warn you, just watch the cu past podcast just to see what shit you're getting into, because we've gotten into weirder shit. It's dark up in here. <laughs> I like I like it already. <laughs> so get <okay>, flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, okay. We did such horrible things. <laughs> you... Initiated such horrible things, and um, now we come to the end of the podcast where Omar is going to hit, have his little entertainment update. <laughs> oh, right. Well, <clears throat> welcome one and all to Omar's entertainment section. Uh, today, I have for you one thing: Avengers: Age of Ultron. Now. I'm probably going to go ahead and guess that none of you have seen this. <laughs> no, you've all seen it, because if you hadn't seen it, be you're dead to, dead me. to me. Uh, oh, good, she got break. Now, here's the thing. I've uh, looked over it a few times, and I've come up with various theories about what it's going to be like, uh, other than just, you know, really, really fucking awesome. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to lay out some theories for you here, okay? First of all, Hawkeye is going to die. <laughs> Someone's going to die in Avengers Age of Ultron, we know this. It's going to be Hawkeye. I, I Everyone else has got some kind of future arrangement going on. Die. Nick Fury's already oh, almost died. Not. It's going to be Hawkeye. Hawkeye or Rhodey? Or who? It. Hawkeye or Rhodey. They're the only ones who have and had, and have had enough screen time in the trailer for me to believe could die, whilst also being not essential enough to die. Um, on top of that, Hook and Natasha. They gone bang! Yeah, baby. Wait. They gone bang! No, but seriously, they, they gone bang. Uh, hopefully not as the Hulk, because I don't think we have a Black Widow after that anymore. But um, point is, Worth that's going to happen. Uh, because, see, in one moment in the trailer, they do the hand thing that the Hulk normally does with Betty. And Betty, being a boring bitch, is now gone, I'm guessing. Well, I want Betty to return. I just want to, you know, know what happened to her. We'll probably see her in a, in a separate movie. Devoted to it, but at least, what happened to Betty? Probably she just pissed off. She does that. I, don't does know, that. I, I mean, we like even in the first Avengers film, Thor got a throwaway line about Jane, but it's like, oh, Betty doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I know. But to be fair, the the uh, it was in Banner does run away from Betty. It's not like if you if you like someone, you run away across the world. You met some other people. If I know, you, they, but they, they like, already know him. You're not gonna mention. Like I don't know. Yeah, I used to have someone or some like throwaway line. I don't give a shit. Just. Maybe, but then, but then all of them would have liked to do it. I mean, technically, it's probably like, like Black Widow's probably got some like ex lover you don't know about. Is she? Yeah, mentioned? the A.K. Bruce, uh, not Bruce. Um, Bucky, Bucky. I'm getting the bees confused. Did you say Bucky or Fucky? Bucky right. was her fucky. He <laughs> could have been both. <laughs> okay, continue. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> my point is, um, on top of that, as far as I can tell, uh, first of all, James Spader, I believe. Spader, I believe. He's doing a miraculous job as uh, Ultron. Well, that that was... fucking voice, though. It is chilling. To the core. It's seriously, seriously uh, a, a really good villain. Uh, that said, his design is 
mediocre. Kind of looks like a Terminator to me. Um, kind of like, okay, he just he's, he's still too emotive. I would have almost preferred it if he looked just like a straight up robot, as if he didn't even have any facial muscles. That to me would have been scarier. I think if he was just a robot, but, uh, that would I would I think that would have been uh, really good. We haven't seen Paul Bettany's vision yet. Uh, we have seen the Avengers hang out though uh, in the extended trailer, and I think that's yeah, that was very awesome. good. I love that. I love that they they had a chance to uh, they're showing the kind of the group kind of bond, bond together and become more than mates. Because now that Shield's gone, their being a team is entirely dependent on their own uh, choice. They have to want to do this. They have to want to do this with each other. And I like that that they're not just saying oh they're a team just cause. Uh, on top of that, other stuff. Uh, first of all, it looks like the team's going to get split up at some point. Which I'm not sure I'm a fan of either, but still. Uh, but apparently, uh, the Hulk will end up somewhere in the snow. I believe Hulk, Hulk is following. Oh, him. yeah, Bruce, nice and sexy, shirtless. <laughs> not yeah. for long. He does the Hulk, as far as I can tell. But, uh, but yeah, apparently, Hulk is following because I saw, saw Hulk in the uh, snow again. Uh, Hulk will also end up in uh, South Africa at some point and will fight Banner in a, in a Hulkbuster armor, which is significantly bigger than it was last time. Uh, on top of that, uh, we'll be seeing uh, Natasha fight in her proper superhero suit now. She'll, she's going to have uh, the Stingers back. Uh, Rhodey might be, may, might, uh, Rhodey seems to be in it. He doesn't seem to have a massive part in it, but he seems to be in it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, um, recently there was a clip released. I haven't had a chance to probably watch it, but it appears to be uh, what's his name? Uh, Tony Stark and Captain America fighting. Which, uh, if uh, you know about the future releases for Marvel, seems to be a bit of a hint as to the uh, nature of the next Captain America, Captain America movie, Captain Civil America War. Civil War, which is based on the comic Why Civil War. Which is listen, movie. listen, Civil War, keep the sadness to the fucking comments. I haven't read it, but I've heard about it, and it's like, no. Yeah, yeah. it's bad. Um, it's, all, it's, it really, really, shit goes down. That I said, I kind of want them to hold off on it. Until they get Spider-Man and Wolverine back, I know, but they were very big parts of that story, and I feel like taking them out was almost going to ruin it just a little bit. I feel like just having Stark and and the Cap and the Cap in it, you're going to need a little more. Uh, are you done? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, everything. Other than once again the fact that it looks fucking. Awesome. Awesome. And the music, oh my fucking oh god. My we god. could do an entire fucking podcast in the future trailer alone. Many strings. Oh god, fuck. Stop. Okay, creepy? Yes. Creepy as balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, one last thing. As good as it is, I just want to make sure that everyone remembers that Batman Superman movie is going to come out soon, and that's going to blow that shit clean out the fucking water. Just saying. Okay, uh, Creepy, do you have any announcements about any reviews or any projects that are upcoming for you? I've got a, uh, I've got a book coming out. I'm back to reviewing things on Manic and uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, I'll uh, post a video when my, uh, when my book does go up. And um, for now, that's it. Okay, uh, creepy. Uh, after we stop the podcast on Skype, can you send me links to where other people can buy your books as well as like your YouTube channel? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. Okay. Because this is what the pod you come as a guest on the podcast, and I advertise you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I can't pay you, so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough. Uh, I think I would have rather had money, but all right. <laughs> Shut up! I would rather. The honesty. Have money the too. honesty. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, my um, long list of announcements. Uh, I'm working on the next chapter of Animorgy, which is my post-war Animorphs fic, and I was like, got really distracted last night, so I wrote like a paragraph or two and then ran out of time before I had to go to sleep. Shame. Uh, <laughs> the next thing is on a, the site Subeda, Morris Tide has ended, so my review of that event, which was around like the first time that the event had a plot to it, no, that review should be out in an, around a week at most. Next, the latest chapter of The Dawning, um, Post-war time traveling Animorphs fic was released a few days ago, and shortly after I end this podcast 
in around maybe an hour or so, I'll start recording Zone 91, which is my Animorphs Reread pro podcast. And I finally, I've uh, finished reading the Maze Runner book a few days ago, and the review of that should be out in a few days. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, final words. Uh, I'll go first. Until next video, goodbye. Next creepy. And finally, Omar will say something really stupid, and we'll end there. Okay. Is that it? That's oh, it. Oh, no, no, no. Vagina titties beam counter. Uh...